And uh, I'd like to recognize the gentlewoman from Oklahoma, Ms. Bice. Thank five you. Five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Administrator. It was great to see you in Oklahoma under a bit of sad circumstances with the passing of General Thomas Stafford. Uh, we celebrated his life a couple of weeks ago, and I was honored to be a part of that. And thank you for uh, recognizing and honoring such an incredible Oklahoman. Let me start by um, asking you, I am still fairly new to Congress. This is my second term. And what I have noticed is that there seems to be a lot of work being done in the space arena, but we tend to, in some cases, be siloing a lot of that work. How can NASA, the FAA, and the DOD strategically pull resources and expertise to conduct essential research in an area of fiscal in an era of fiscal constraints that ensures we'll have continued innovation crucial for maintaining uh, global leadership in civilian aviation? Well, aviation research is the first A in NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. So where did the wingtips come from that improve the efficiency of the wing? Where does the design of the wing, it often these things that make aviation safer, more efficient, and earlier in the meeting I described, for example, the joint project that we have with Boeing to try to have that single aisle mid-range transport save 30% of fuel. All of this is a major part of what we do. It's not just space, it's not just aeronautics, it's also climate as well, because we have the instruments that measure the climate. Uh, we're coming into a new era of air mobility, particularly in urban areas. So the old idea of the Jetsons suddenly flying around, that's right upon us. Uh, and we are researching that. And what we found is that a lot of industry, uh, commercial enterprises, are having major breakthroughs in that. And so uh, I'm, uh, we're all over aviation, and, and that is clearly a very proud part of NASA. You sort of briefly touched on this, but I think it's worth maybe diving a little deeper into it. Um, as you look at sort of what the next phase of um, space looks like, what keeps you up at night? Um, at the end of the day, defying the forces of gravity with millions of pounds of thrust, putting human beings up there in a very unforgiving uh, atmosphere and bringing them back alive through the fiery heat of re-entry. For the astronauts coming back from the moon, they'll hit 5,000 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So uh, that hopefully doesn't keep me com up completely all night, <laughs> but I know that everything that we do like that, we're right on the edge. But that's the part of discovery. That's the part of adventure. That's the part of being in a frontier mode, going out there and doing unusual things. President Kennedy said it best at Rice University in the stadium in September of 62. He said, we go to the moon and do other things, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. And what we do is hard, but it's worth doing. Thank you, and I, I'll just um, maybe wrap up by mentioning there's a lot of work being done, I think, uh, by NASA to encourage young people to consider um, getting into the sort of aviation space, and I think we need to make sure that we continue that and focus on it because I have been to um, you know, some of the facilities, and when you see these young people walking through, 
uh, looking at astronaut suits and previous videos, they get such excitement. And I think we need to continue to foster that because they are the future uh, of NASA. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield.